And in Jesus' name, stir us up today. Stir us up today. All right. Well, last week we talked. We started talking about soaring with eagles, and um, and you know I thought I was going to go a certain direction, but God wants me to put an emphasis on a certain thing today. But um, as I get into it, you know I want to. I don't know. This is going to be a little different. I want to. I want to. How many of you feel? Sometimes you feel a nagging, a nagging, in your heart, just a nagging that. You know, you know, and you, you even ask yourself, why am I putting up with this? A nagging. And I know we ought to be, this ought to be better now. Uh, I ought to be doing better now. I, I, I ought to be more efficient, more effective. I ought, to, I ought to know God better. I ought to know, I ought to hear the voice of God better. Why am I tolerating so much? Why am I tolerating this? Even at this age or at this place in my life, why? What you know, you know, so that happens to us because there's something in us that knows there's something in every one of us right now that knows I ain't supposed to be living here. I ain't supposed to be dealing with this. I'm better than this. Boy, I'm starting off with a bang, huh? <laughs> I normally kind of work into it, but I've been working with this all morning. Yeah. So, so, you know, so there's some nagging in How many of you got something, don't raise your hand, but how many of you got something nagging in you? Like, dog. <laughs> Why am I, you know, now if you weren't here last week, you're going to have to go back and get it. But I, need to, I can't go back to all that. But I talked about the chicken in the barnyard. All the chicken does, he doesn't look up. He just keeps looking down and keeps scratching. Trying to get his existence right where he is. He doesn't look up. God didn't call us to be chicken. He called us to soar with eagles, like eagles. And so people that's supposed to soar, there's something inside of them like, why am I putting up with this? Why am I, why am I putting so much energy on this level here and I ain't supposed to be staying here? Boy, I think I'm a... Yeah, um, why, why you, see, 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 when you know better is possible and you, you choose to stay there and get comfortable right there, that's a learned behavior. See, you can learn to get comfortable in mediocrity. Well, pastor talking already, ain't he? No, see, you can learn. That's a learned behavior. You can learn to stay right there in mediocrity in the barnyard and just get comfortable and, 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 start, and start scratching like anybody else. But I have good news for you this morning. You can get comfortable soaring. You can get comfortable going to new heights. and You can get comfortable climbing. Hallelujah. You can get comfortable. See, see, you know, I, I was looking at something. Oh, I found a message and everything. But in my in my basement at the house, we had some water leak, and so in one place, and, and there's a bubble of water. Well, I guess it's water that's in there. Uh, so in the ceiling in the basement. But if I go to the other floor, that's if I go to the next level, that's the floor. But if I go back downstairs, that's the ceiling. Your ceiling can be the floor on your next level. Part of my job is to help you see the ceiling. This ain't all. This ain't all there is for Ken Friendly. I don't care what folks say. And you got to get to the, I don't care, but I'm defining some things in my own life. And this is not as high as I can go. What you going to do? I'm going to climb some stairs. Climb in the stairways. Y'all better stop. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to climb some stairs. Because, see, this, ain't, this, this is not my life. I'm not going to get comfortable here. I'm not going to study here. I'm not going to put a lot of energy here. I'm not going to make plans for here because I'm not. Stand here. Come on now. I'm going to next level. And so God has called us to soar. 
So I'm, I'm talking to, I'm going to talk to the eagles today if there's any chickens that happen to have wandered in here. Because <laughs> I'm not going to call anybody chicken. I ain't going to do that. You're not going to get mad at me. <laughs> but but I, I do want to speak to the eagle in you because if you're born again, you were created to soar. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40, please. I should go there. You're already there. Verse 29. For he gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now Isaiah is not saying we're going to grow wings but this God is using an example of the strength of eagles to show us what our relationship with him is all about. Now we talked about a few characteristics of the eagle last time and I believe these characteristics are uh, things that God wants us to, to watch, to learn and even emulate. I'm not going to go through all of them but just for the sake today as it relates to what I'm going to talk about we said that the eagle had discovered early that they were born to soar. Y'all remember that? We said inherent in them, God had placed this, this, this strong desire to soar. So even when they, uh, even, and it's, it's in them, of course the mother has to get the other eagle to, to start, but, but he said that we can soar. Now, um, I, I got an image here of an eagle. And that's you. Now give me my other image up here. Because I, 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 I asked them to give me a, another one. Look at that. But you don't see him flapping like no chicken. Or a pigeon. Or a geese. What's he doing? Sorry. That's what someone looks like. Shanda. Look at that. You gonna flap one time? No. What you doing? I'm just so I'm just chilling, Pastor. <laughs> see, see, that's effortless. And I told you last week, he 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 catches that that thermal wind, the the heat from above, the cool wind, and the, and he just, he just catches that wind, and that that's all he does. See, and God wants you to catch the wind of the Holy Ghost. And quit, and quit flapping and, and struggling and, and, and trying to make it, doing all your energy. And that's what I'm talking about today. He wants you to just, just, just soar. I don't know where you're going, but he's just soaring. See, that's you in the spirit. That's you. And God, God had called us to just soar like that. Every now and then, every now and then, you'll see them flap. But th this is how they, you, you'll see them flap, but they, 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 don't, they don't like. <laughs> right, right, right. They go. That's how they do it. Because they're not doing it in their own strength. And this is the message God has given us. See, a lot of times, I told you last time, a lot of times people, people get so, so, so busy and so caught up in their own energy. And that's short-lived. You can do that for a while. You can do that for a while. But eventually, okay. That's not how I want to spend too much time on that. Okay, so, 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 so he's soaring. And see, and he's not just soaring for the sake of it. He's not just trying to survive a storm. Remember I told you how to, when the storm comes, they just rise above it. He's not just trying to survive. He's overcoming. I'm saying this, on, this is how we overcome. Hallelujah. All right. So he uses the he uses the uh, the storm to lift him up. 
he doesn't use the storm. Kind of like airplane, you know, aircraft, they go into the wind to get the lift. The, the uh, eagle, he, he uses the storm. He doesn't run from the storm. Chicken's running around, oh my God, what's going to happen? The eagle said, where it is? There it is. Okay, come on, bring it. And it lifts him up. Show me. I got. I got another clip. Show. Show the. Show the eagle lift up. Watch this. How the eagle just take the wind and just get get lift up. He'll he'll fly through the cloud. It's cloudy, but he's like, that's okay. I'm gonna get up out of here. I'm gonna go on up to a whole new level. <laughs> and then, <clears throat> yeah. You know, let, let me get up out of here. Messing around with these ground ground dwelling folks. <clears throat> Where you going, man? I'm just chilling. Yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah, what's happening down there? What's up? What's up, everybody? Yeah. And it's okay. What that look like? <laughs> see, see that wind. <clears throat> he used that wind to just, just, just guide him to that that lifted place. The wind of the spirit of God. And God is telling you, if you will let me, I'll lift you up. That storm does not have to define you. That storm does not have to bury you. You go through the storm. You don't, you, don't go, you don't go to the storm. You go, come on, somebody. You go what? Through the storm. You just rise up above the storm. And so God is teaching us through, through the characteristics of the eagle. Listen, listen, you are not, you are not defined down here. Now, we talk about all that. We talk about that at Great Limb. I just want to give you a couple of visuals so you can see yourself in the spirit. You're not going to grow wings, but I just want you to see. Now, I want, to, I want to deal with this area of God really want me to talk about strengthening you today. So let's go back to verse 31. Hallelujah. He says, for those who wait on the Lord. Hmm. The Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Everybody needs time of renewing, recharging. Everybody, all of us, need time of renewing and recharging. Um, um, waiting on God now church services are good going to a conference are good but that's no substitute for waiting to having that personal time with God in many I told you I told you last week about about, about, about talking about ministers see I know you know it's easy a minister can do it, spend a lot of time finding something study to preach. See, the church worker can find a lot of lot of things to do and be so and, and locked into doing their work and serving and, and volunteering in church. And you can do all of that without having any kind of relationship with God. And the, the, the thing that strengthens me, the thing that strengthens you to do what I do, it's not it's not what I hear, it's who I'm with. And so he's telling me that, that you'll be, you, you can be young, I mean, excuse me, you can be weary, you can do all of that, but, but and you will get weary. I said you will get weary. You're going to get tired. You're going to get tired just from disappointments, just from living, just from, just, from, just from having to make decisions, just from your schedule. Just from raising kids, just from working, just from living. You're going to get weary. You're going to get tired. Everybody needs to be recharged. And, and if I don't recharge, that weariness will set in. And see, weary folks make crazy decisions. Weary people um, are not really friendly sometimes and really people they, they, they make decisions that will cost them long term when you when you're weary but God said I understand that that's why I gave you a remedy for weary yeah. 
we're constantly facing temptation, pressure, stress, decision, mistakes, expectation from other people. Weary. It takes strength. Listen, it takes strength to move past hurts. How many people you know, they've been hurt in church and they still live in hurt. It takes strength to move past hurts and they did this to me and I'm not going to ever, I'm not going to ever put myself in this position again. Well, you need to stop living there. I'm not going to ever love somebody and, and put myself in a position to get hurt again. Well, stop living there. And see, we, we're, us eagles, we have, we have the ability to, to rub shoulders, not just rub shoulders, but there's a divine exchange of power and strength that God gives us. And that's just what, this is what he's talking about here. So let me, let me tell you what weary is. We don't all know what tired is. Weariness is not necessarily um, tiredness of the body. Weariness most times takes place in the minds and attitudes. Weary is, well, tired is when you spend six hours cleaning the house and your energy is gone. You don't want to do nothing else. Weary is when you're tired after doing all of that <laughs> and then you sit down for dinner and five to six times you got to answer the phone because somebody keep calling. So not only are you your energy gone, but now you're annoyed. Weariness is that annoyance. Weariness is that, 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 that vexing that has to do. God! Man, they make me sick. You know, you start saying stuff like that when you're weary. See, when you're weary, you start picking out other folks' faults. And magnifying them like you don't have any. No, when you're weary, when you're weary, you want to find something else to make you, make you feel a little better on the inside. And the best way to do that is to find somebody that, that's less than you or did something crazy. No, you know what? Forget that. Man, we were talking the other day. I said, boy, I, I'm glad, man. I'm growing. I'm growing so much. Because I told, we were talking about something, and, you know, people did something. I said, you know what? Praise God. That ain't none of my business. That ain't none of my business. If that's the way they want to roll, let them roll. They ain't ask me. They ask me, I give them my bit, but I ain't, I ain't giving them my nickel. I don't have two cents. I got a nickel. <laughs> what would happen if, because see, 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 I'm operating at a level now, and I, oh boy, I, I'm I'm out of the chicken yard. Eagles don't spend a whole lot of energy in other folks' business. So I say, you know what? That ain't. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm too. I'm my level too high. Huh? To bring me down. I ain't coming down there. What? For what? Why should I come down there? That is not in my business. If they want to act like that, that's their business. As long as they don't encroach in my world. If they ask me for help, I'm there. But not, that's not my I, don't, I can care less what somebody bought with their money. I can care less what they wear, what they bought to wear. With that money. Only one I care about that is that one right there. That one. I don't even care now. I don't even care. I don't even go. Whatever. No, I mean, she, she just do what she want to do. She got it like that. But I don't, I don't, I used to fuss all the time. Dog, you spent it. God, dog. Look, look at that. Look. Because I didn't make her bring, bring me all the receipts. We had to do it like that. We had budgets. And I said, she bring me all the receipts. What, what the? God. You couldn't have found one? You couldn't have found one at Walmart for this price? <laughs> Why'd you have to go over the? That was my business. But I'm up a little higher now. So I don't check the receipts. See, you got to grow in every area of your life. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, my pen fell up. So. No, no, but I'm saying that about, about other people. See, when you get weary, you start doing stupid things when you're weary. You do. You start doing stupid things, start hanging with stupid people that doing stupid things. When you're tired, 
emotionally. Now I'm, I'm telling you, cause see, see, some stuff is not not sin, but sometimes we get we just get weary. I mean, if you got a family, you got more than two people in the family, you 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 have a temptation to get weary with stuff and just like you know what, and then and then don't address things, and then they just go on, cause you're too tired too tired to deal with that right now. I don't want to deal with that. They'll they'll be all right. They'll, no, they won't. Some things they won't be all right. And so sometimes we, we let things go. But he said, uh, the ego, the ego, God said, I'll deal with your weariness. All right. <laughs> Give me uh, uh, Isaiah 40, 29 in the New Living, please. He gives power to the weak and strength to who? The powerless. Even youth will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. Give me that again in the message. These are only scriptures I'm going to think I'm going to use today. He energizes those who get tired. He gives fresh strength to dropouts. For even young people tire and drop out. Young folks in their prime stumble and fall. Now if I'm going to soar, I have to recharge my spiritual reserve now that word wait in the original Hebrew it doesn't mean like sitting at the bus stop waiting on the people moving it means binding together so you cannot be broken let me get my I, got, I brought a couple props with me today this is prop day a little something a little something I you know, I, I have to. My go through when I'm thinking about preaching. I go through my mind, and uh, I'm like, okay, how can I demonstrate this? All right. Vanna, would you like to help me out? No, you you're okay. I, I see you touching stuff. She like to organize. She, she got she got the, she got the move stuff on. You know how they do. My mother used to do that. She don't. She doesn't. She don't do that. But but the word weight means to bind. Now imagine this is a steel steel rod. This is God. This is us. How was that, Miss Gloria? Okay. I always need somebody from the audience. You ever go to Las Vegas? Don't sit in the first two rows. <laughs> they got dead one time. That was so funny. Deb, like, <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> but they wish they hadn't done it with that boy. What's that boy's name? Wayne Brady. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell y'all about that some other time. But Wayne Brady's like, oh, Lord, I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell. <laughs> It's serious, right on stage. She just messed up his whole show. <laughs> anyway, y'all don't want to hear about that though. Somebody, yes, I do, Pastor. I'm talking about, I'm talking about our strength because this is us, and over time, you know, we pressure come, bam, pressure, disappointment, miss expectations. See, we start praying. See that little fray right there. Over time, little by little, little stuff hit us here. Little stuff hit to come to church. Oh Lord, they look, they ain't trying to speak to me today. Man. Listen, we gotta be. Listen, we didn't leave here at eight fifteen, and they ain't even got out of bed yet. Man. Well, come on, I got, to, I got to serve. I got to serve. Where, where's everybody? Is everybody ready, sir? No, so and so overslept. Oh, God Almighty. God. Okay, what we got? God, dog, I didn't get my dividend. Where my dividend at? <laughs> I thought I was getting a dividend. <laughs> see, see, some stuff, some stuff just take you to the edge, don't it? Some stuff just take you to your breaking point. <laughs> Amen. But see, every day. In your marriage, in your family, on the job, at church, just living. You get to a break. Now, this one little thing will push you over the edge. And so, 
we got a lot of fractured and frayed people. And God's like, you can't throw it like that. That wasn't in the plan, but that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> so, so God says, wait on me. Those who wait on the Lord. I'm going to tell you what that means in a minute. But, but this is God. God said, the word wait means to bind together. Bind together. So as I spend my time with God in the morning, and as I read the word and think about the goodness of God and come to church and hear an awesome message from an awesome pastor, Amen. <laughs> that would be me. That would be me right there. And but 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 as I as I you know just just love on somebody and love on my neighbor and and spend that time meditating, thinking about the goodness of God, praising God and honoring God and, and resisting the temptation to to get into strife and division and not allowing unforgiveness to mess me up. I become this is waiting on God. Something happens. Now let's see if the pressures of life can, can crush this. I can't stand you. Oh. All right. It's all good. It's all good. Well, the folk down at the job, they, they think they're gonna try to they're gonna try to let no that don't that don't bother me. That don't bother me. I didn't get my dividend in. Ain't no problem. Cause see, see when you bound up with him. See, now all of a sudden, see, my binding, waiting and binding with him, now I take on his strength. And that's what, that's what God is trying to tell us. He said, listen, listen, I want to give you an exchange. You can't, you, look, 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 I want, listen, listen, you can't, you can't get this anywhere. You can't get this at the schoolhouse. You can't get this from Jack Daniels. You can't get this from them blunts. This is only reserved for the eagle. See, only eagles can soar, but only eagles can soar when we're like this. And so here's what the enemy trying to do. He's trying to keep us from binding ourselves with God. And he'll keep us working in our own strength. And you can do that only for so long. That's why we have dropouts. And God is trying to get it. Look, I got something for you. I just need you. See, going to church, you know, I'm a preacher, so going to church is wonderful. But see, this, you don't get this from coming to church. You get this. It's you and God. This is where you, you get this. And this is what, see, the enemy, he ain't go to church. Just don't get serious about your personal relationship. Because if I can get you working and get you tired, you'll be irritable. You won't want to do anything with anybody. You won't, you won't even listen to God. Because weariness, see, when, when you're weary in your attitude, you think everybody's out to get you. Take advantage of you. Well, sometimes they are. But here's the key. This is the secret. This is what I want to talk to you about today. I want you to be strong. This is your strong. We, we, we go through stuff. But, but we, we climb above it with his strength. Before and after. Who is this? Oh, don't answer. See, some of you came in here this morning like this. Look at that. Hair all messed up. Well, not literally, but, you know, frayed, uh, fragmented, divided, here, watch it, here physically, emotionally, mentally, you, I don't know where you are, I can't even find that area code. And it's because, because you, you're here because I, some, some folks here out of habit, this was, was just Sunday, I don't want them calling me, I don't want nobody calling me. It's all about you being, I want you strong. 
I, I want you strong. I want that when you. I want you to come to church and say, like, you know, your 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 attitude will come to church. Like, I want to make show me how to make this work. And this is what this is all. That's what this whole ministry is all about. But look, this thing can't be can't be broken. That's why I said, if God be for us, who can be against us? But I gotta get to this place. I got to get bound up in Him, not a denomination. In Him. Not in an organization, in him. Okay, let's talk about binding them. Ah. All right. So, this is what Isaiah meant when he talked about that. Well, what does uh, waiting on the Lord look like? I think I told you. Thinking about him, meditating, making him the center of my thoughts. I told you last week, see, nothing can take precedence over my personal relationship with God. Now, I remember, I, I think I told you this, but I remember asking my, my pastor and mentor, I said, how do you keep from getting burnt out? He's been in ministry, he's been in ministry now 50 some years. And he looked at me and said, boy, only folks get burnt out are folks that ain't walking with God. He said, there's no way it's impossible. And see, this was years ago. At that time, I'm like, okay, all right, hyper faith guy, hyper faith guy. But now I understand. He said, the only way you can get burned out is to do everything in your own strength. You cannot depend on God and walk with God and get burnt out. It's impossible. I'm like, okay, well, what does that look like? And that's when he told me his regiment. He said, I don't ever let my battery get low. He said, I said, no, he said, no. He said, no. Every day, I spend an hour in prayer. Every day. Well, except Sunday when I preach. Because I'm, I'm so built up. I don't even pray Sunday morning because I'm at that time he's doing like five services. He said, I pray every day. I read six chapters of the Bible every day. He said, I don't get burnt out. I don't get, my battery never gets low. I never need to put water. That was when they had uh, the bank batteries to put water in. Yeah. I don't have to I don't have to top off my battery. I don't let it, let it get low. Now, I, I wish I knew what year that was. That's when I said, that's the secret. See, I don't I, I don't get I always ask people how you get there. I don't get all like wow, that's amazing. I, what they do, I want give me information. And that's the piece of information he gave me years ago. And that's that's been my secret. I don't let my battery get low. Nothing take precedence of my relationship with not even her. Nothing. And the benefits of that is now I'm not now, now I haven't mastered. I don't do it all right. Cause because you know, uh yeah, I don't do it all right. I'm talking about I'm talking about a prolonged funk. Sometimes you get weary, just like in the daytime. You like, and you, I know, I know that you do stupid stuff when you're weary. Because I've, I've done some stupid stuff. I'm like, dog, what was I thinking? Once I got charged back up, but I don't do it all right. But I don't have. I'm just as excited about ministry and living for God, my relationship with God now as I was 30 years ago. And he and um, and I can see, I can see, you know, the the growth. And so what it, it I, I for a long time I scratched my head, especially when I became a pastor. I scratched my head and just I think about two years ago, I really like God, what is up? Because it seemed like the saints were just getting picked off. Pew, pew, pew. I'm talking about I'm talking I'm not talking about novices, I'm talking about saints of God. And and I really got like, Lord, what is up? And and this is what he showed me is how he said, Well, a lot of times people see you can when you grow in the Lord, you can get you can start thinking it's all you. And so and when people experience some success, all of a sudden they don't need to depend on me as much. And so they don't have that relationship like they used to. Well, they depended on me. They just depend on what they can do. Okay, this is what I did last time. Let me do it again. And he said, a lot of time, and people you know, and maybe some of you in here, you're not, you're not even where you were before. Well, why? If you trace it, you'll, you'll see that my, my personal 
time, my personal waiting, my personal binding time, it's not what it used to be. I'm trying to say, this is not a condemnation, this is a location. Because what's at stake and what's available is just absolutely incredible. And so you, you have a lot of people, you see that there's no, and they know, well, don't be judging me. Well, you know, you, you see no fruit. And so it makes you wonder if they're even born again. There's something, really, I wonder if they're even born again. Well, Pastor, you judging? <sighs> okay, what was I talking about? <laughs> it's okay? Yes, sir. I'm talking about buying it. We want to be, we want to be, um, I want to be like a rod of steel, man. Now, what does it look like? <laughs> I'll tell you what it doesn't look like. I'm not saying that I have to spend five hours a day in a dark room humming. <laughs> I was telling Deb, this story I read about a lady, she had eight children. Eight children. Because see, this is, and this is, a, see, don't complicate this, okay? I mean, like I said, I haven't mastered it, but don't complicate it. This lady had eight children. How many of you know she doesn't have a lot of free time? And so what she would tell her kids is, Mama, go, go spend time with the Lord. Okay. Mama, go, go spend time with the Lord. And so what she would do, this is her apron. What she would do, it's like, okay, mama gonna go spend time with the Lord. Father, I just want to thank you. I bless you. You're so good to me. Thank you for strengthening me to take care of these eight children. I don't know where that fool man is, but I just, I, I bless you. Thank you for being everything, the husband, the father, the daddy, everything. Thank you, Lord. That was good. All right, baby, go pick up. Let's go, go, go get, pick up the toys. All the toys in the way. I got to cook up some. Go, go to the bathroom. Go pick up your diaper. <laughs> See, it ain't complicated. In your, in your, at the stoplight, you can, you can minister to the Lord. Now, I'm saying you, you, you do need to have some dedicated time, but sometimes you don't have time. You know, people that have, uh, people that have alcohol issue challenges, you know, challenges, alcohol people, alcoholic. Now, I don't know because I was told this. <laughs> you know what that sounded like? That sounded like Pastor, you lying. <laughs> But, no, I used, to, I used to work for an alcoholic. And I, he didn't tell me this. I saw it. I saw it. And so when we had stressful e events at work and all that, I could see him. That means he wanted to drink. And so people that, that's challenged with alcohol, they understand when they feel that thing coming on, man, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be right back. I'll go get me a drink. Or oh, in his case, This back, this back in the 70s. That's the death drawer. And he walked around. I wonder why. I said, boy, he's drinking coffee all day. <laughs> I didn't, you know, he, he had a little coffee cup. And the only reason I knew about it, because the issues of life hit me. I never thought in my wildest psychedelic dream I would ever get to a place that was one of the lowest places in my life. And I was, <laughs> me and him were going to the club after work. And I started drinking all the time for a, for a season. But, so he, he would feel it coming on. See, when you feel this weariness and this stress coming on, you know when it's coming. It don't just hit you all the time at once. You need to tell somebody, hey, I need, I need to go to the car. You don't need to tell them why. I, I, I need to. I need about five minutes. I'm, I gotta go to the car. And you go to the car and get you a, a drink from the Holy Ghost. And here's how you do that. I'm telling. It's not complicated. Father, you know what? Whew, I am tired of I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. And see, and if I need some. If I don't get your strength, I might. I might hurt somebody. I may say something that ain't in the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So Lord, here I am. I, would you strengthen me? You know, I love you. I bless you. You're so faithful. I honor you. I glorify you. You said you would strengthen me. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Lord, I'm coming right now. I only got, I only got a couple more minutes for my break time. I thank you for it. I receive it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Then you get on up. God, 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 God will break you off right there. Don't sit through that weariness and let the devil pound you in the head and pound you in the head and pound you in the head. You're not equipped to handle it. But if you're going to soar, you, you got to learn how to just wait. This is what he's offering us, y'all. Hallelujah. Staying close to God will strengthen you. I don't have to understand how all of that works. I don't have to understand. I, ain't gonna wait. I don't have to understand that. I just got to do it. I just have to do it. And, and allow him. He said he, said he, would, he would give rest to the weary. Right? So in order to get through difficult times and to get through them, and, and we all have them. We, we all have them. And again, we don't want to just get comfortable. That's one thing about the ego, and, and I don't know how many deal with it. See, see, what was once comfortable to the eaglet becomes, becomes an annoying to them because they got to get out. See, I asked you in the beginning of the service, is something nagging at you? Is something where you once were comfortable, now you don't even like it. Why, why am I even dealing with it? Why am I even saying? That's because God is trying to edge you to jump out the thing. Come on, one up here. Soar. Don't stay down there with that. Don't stay down there with that. Soar. I told you the other day, the eagles typically, you know, as you saw here, typically soar alone. You don't see them flocking. And it looks lonely up there. But the eagle doesn't care. Because the eagle feels like, I don't need the approval of the majority. <laughs> Me and God are majority. So they don't they don't flock. They, they don't look for everybody to agree with them or everybody to understand them or everybody to, no, they don't care about all that. Man, I just need to get out of this chaos. I'm going to a new level. How many new level folks in the house today? See, and, and, and here's the thing: God wants to take us there. And this is the beginning. This is the beginning of the new level. You hear people say that all the time. But you can't go to no new level with the same thinking. You, you, can't, you can't take no old thinking into new level. It ain't going to work. You can't take old stamina into new level. They always say new level what? Well, not new devil, different devil. But, yeah, okay, new devil. Uh, but, but see, you can't, so, so I can't deal with this new devil or different devil with old tactics, old strength. That strength was for that level. So let God, let God get you uncomfortable. Let, see, let him stir up your nest. It's not, it's not that even the devil, man, it ain't the devil. <laughs> Sometimes we're like, ah, why didn't bother? No, no, God is trying to stir you up to get uncomfortable in this level, in that situation, in whatever nest you're in. God is for you. And he wants you to be able to, to, to soar to a new level. And not only that, once we... What's my strength? Oh. And see, once I get locked up with him, see, you start going through difficult stuff. People, people around you won't even know you're going through. You know why? Because when you're locked up with him, now you can go through your stuff and you have enough strength to help them get through their stuff that's the will of the father and so and so so the whole thing is so now now i'm not you're not pulling me down but yet i am what pulling you up because now i'm operating on the strength of god can you imagine what it would be like if we didn't do what we're telling you we couldn't help nobody we come up with all kind of lame excuses no it's the will of god we we deal with stuff too I don't know. We, I would probably be drinking, you know, just to get some peace. That's what I did last time. I know what to do to get some peace. For a minute, at least. 
I would I would I wouldn't expose myself no you know what I mean no I'd be a phony and a fake that's what you do but when you got strength you're like I, look look either they like me or they don't you know I ain't jumping through hoop I, I'm, I'm good in my own skin that's strength it takes strength to stay in your own skin I found out it takes strength not to be moved by other folks expectations it takes strength to do it. it takes but you know man it takes strength to go through and God wants us there so not only again not only for us but we can help other people Whew, all right hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. How you feeling? You're going to get through difficult times, man. I say you're going to get through difficult times. I don't care. I, some, a whole lot of stuff. You can get through difficult times. Some of you need to soar above some stuff right now. You've you, you gotten comfortable. You made excuses for it. And you're like, well, you know, in, 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 in two months, in six months, you know, when it's when it, when it, the end of the year, uh, 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 when my child graduates. Uh, look, all that. What about right now? What about right now? Why don't we do something about it right now? Okay, I don't think they like that, Steve. Uh, no, no, because see, we always put stuff off. We put stuff off that, well, when it's happening, what, what about going to work on it right now? Why, what about taking this thing to God right now? And say, God, I need strength, and this is not right. This is harming me. This is harming me emotionally. It's harming me physically. I need, I need some strength to break from this. I told you it could be different. I don't need to be walking around in pieces. And everybody in the house walking around in pieces. Yeah. Just, just walk around fractured. I don't need that. I need the strength of God. In Psalm 103, he said he'll renew your youth like the eagles. Maybe we'll talk about that. But, but he's talking about it does an exchange. Man. All right, let me wrap it up. Mm, mm, mm. I don't think I gave it. Give me Ephesians 3, 14, please. Stand close to God, we'll strengthen you. Hallelujah. And I, I, I really want to impress on you, we really need to get serious about our spiritual lives, taking care of our spiritual lives. You know, we spend a lot of money, you know, going to seminars and classes and reading all these blogs and all of that let's get serious about our spiritual lives I, I said let's get serious about our spiritual life. God doesn't care about us having material things he doesn't mind us being comfortable but let's get serious about our spiritual lives what's happening to me because I can't control what other people do but I can control how I respond and I can respond in a from a position of strength. See, when the eagle soaring, he's not he's not moved by all the stuff going on down there. He could care less because it doesn't affect him. I think we can get to that place when it doesn't even affect us. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to say something that might sting a little bit. You okay? <laughs> it's amazing. I, I'm, I'm seeing things and thinking about the, oh, while, I'm, while I'm here. And this is not a good time for me to have to deal with this. But anyway. Um, when the zeal of God begins to taper off, now there's some people you're in a place you're not there yet but you taper it off so when the zeal of God begins to taper off the things of the world become more attractive see nothing just happens overnight it's a gradual thing it's a tapering off when you first got saved man you read the Bible you go to church you talk about the things of God but, but when that tapers off the things of the world become so magnificent that's all you talk about that's not what that turns you on. 
You excited about that? Kind of like football with the football team. You know what? You know what about what about you excited about the Lord like that? Oh, you know the Lord is good too. Yeah, good too. So if you're here today and 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 you feel a tapering off, this is a good service for you because. <laughs> When you lose your desire for God, something else takes place in your heart. When you lose your desire and your zeal, you start losing your strength. The gradual loss of communion and fellowshipping with him and, and only certain parts of the Bible turn you on. Those parts that obviously, you know, benefit you. But, but when you lose the zeal, you lose your strength. Say this with me, please. When I lose my zeal, I lose my, zeal. I lose my, I lose my strength. Now that's, that's a mouthful. Meditate on that because my zeal says, you know what? If I don't get in, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't care. Again, five minutes, two minutes, that's between you and God. But in the car, Lord, I just bless you and thank you for this opportunity. God, I'm going to go serve. Now I'm going to be, going to be a vessel for the, for the service of God. So I thank you for that. Do you know, if you don't have strength, eventually, even you serving becomes, <laughs> I've been in church a long time. A long time. And I would see people complain while they're serving. Well, so I thought, how come they ain't, what they doing? How come they ain't get, <laughs> what, what? Okay, it's quiet in here. <laughs> But that's a lack of strength. It takes strength to keep moving even though you see other folks acting funny. It takes strength. It takes it takes strength to say, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know. <laughs> anyway, I've been saying because I want to go to see. Well, no, I don't want to. Uh, I'll say it like that. It takes strength. It takes, it takes spiritual stamina to stay the course no matter how the people respond. Okay. Whew. Got that out. I had some other words to put in there, but that's, that's good. It, but it's, 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 it takes strength to stay the course. It takes strength to have a fulfilled marriage because there's seasons in marriages. It takes strength to deal with somebody who don't understand where you're coming from. It takes strength. It takes strength when your own family is judging you. Why you stand? Why you? It takes strength to do the word of God. And so what I'm saying, I can't control what other people do, but I can control and buoy up my heart to where I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It takes strength to keep on walking and smiling and being a happy guy when you, are, when you know certain things are going on and you look like a fool. And God said, and God, it takes strength to, because God will tell you sometimes, that right there, take it to your grave. In other words, don't you utter one word about that. I'm like, golly, what they did, they said it's about me. Take it to your grave. Love covers other folks' mess. Oh, I can get up here and tell y'all some stuff and I can, I can weave it in a message too and make sure y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> God said, that you're taking to your grave. It takes strength to do that. And I'm not, again, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying what I have to deal with. Because some stuff I didn't take to my grave that I should have. But, you know, you learn and you grow. All right. Okay. Hallelujah. Let's have a... Uh... Oh, let's read this scripture, please. Um, for this reason... We'll be verse 14, 15, 16, then we're done. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, 
you know, God, God sees us all as one big family. And folks in heaven and folks here, God sees all of us as just one family. Not the heaven-bound family or heaven. Anyway, verse 16. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. If we'll give the spirit of God time and give him precedence, and make him the president of the inner man. Strength as we know it. We don't have to play religious games. We don't have to go through you know, denominational exercises. We don't have to, you know, deal with a lot of stuff in the natural because we run out of gas. And there's a lot of God's people that have just run out of gas. I'm tired of doing this church gymnastics. I'm tired of that. How many of y'all get tired of that? Well, I do. How many of y'all, I get tired of church gymnastics. I tell you what, if I, if I didn't know what I know, I probably would, I probably would, I told y'all the 1,500 quit every every month, the path to burnout.com. If I didn't know what I know, I'd probably be part of that 1,500. Would have been. Praise God. But thank God we have the answer. And and God is so good. I would encourage everybody in here. If you you know, this is a this is a word from God. God, this is a this is not me coming up, okay, what am I gonna preach on? God told me, preach on my strength. We're living in a day. Where, where there's so much distraction, so much pulling at us, so much that it's people like, I don't have time to do all of that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you, I'm not that spiritual. Yes, you are. But you need it. We need to do it. And because, not just for us, because of the world which we live in. All right. Thank you so much for your, your time. My time is gone. I want you to soar. My whole agenda, everything I do, everything we try to do around here, it's all designed. I'm, 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 I'm at a, pl I'm at a different place now. I'm serious. I'm at, I know I keep saying that, but I am, and um, I'm not the same pastor y'all had a year ago. Glory to God. I'm not the same pastor y'all had a month ago. All I want is God's will. Isn't that what Martin Luther King said? I just want to do the will of God, and uh, and those who. Those who want to run with me, come on. Let's do it. How many of y'all like roller coasters? Okay. You, okay. You like roller coasters? I know. Uh, Dev don't like roller coasters. But I love roller coasters. And like I said, I get a message out of everything. And I tell them, don't be taking no picture of me. You know how they take pictures? <laughs> but um, in a roller coaster, you know what you do in a roller coaster? You get in, they put that thing in, and you, 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 you can't move. And you have just yielded all of your control to somebody making $5 an hour <laughs> to, pull that, to pull that little thing and get you. And all you can do is. God wants to push you on his roller coaster and say let me control I'll take you to the valleys but I'll take you up to the mountaintop too but I just need you to strap in sit in holler if you want to but let me control and that's where he wants us to get with his strength let's pray father we do bless you we thank you <laughs> in the name of Jesus Lord, I've given them what I believe you put in my heart today. I pray for those under the sound of my voice that are weary. Weary people make not so smart decisions, but I said that, but weary people allow the devil to have a field day 
in their minds and in their thoughts instigates all kinds of things father I pray that this is not just something we heard but that it's something that is lived and acted upon I pray for those who are trying to deal with the weariness in ways that are not healthy I pray in Jesus name that the wisdom of God the word of God to wait on you so that they can be renewed Father for those who are out of gas Hallelujah For those who are out of gas they, they, they need an infusion I pray Even today That they would just take time In fact Just take time To receive strength from you those who really want to give it up, quit, walk out. Father, I pray. Mm. Okay. Let, let's, let's stand, everybody. I'm going to, God wants me to do this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kelly, I need you to come up. Come and play. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to minister real quickly. Hallelujah. There's some people in here today. You're out of gas. You're out of gas. And God wants you <laughs> to get an injection. Kind of like a blood transfusion, an injection. We we some of us here, a lot of us here, we 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 we've been there, we've got it. We have enough strength to help you push through and come through. Not drag through, but to come through to your next level. Now, this is a spiritual thing. It's not nothing magical, but it is the plan and the purpose of God. Weariness will cause us to drop out, will cause us to not see things clearly. Our objectivity begins to get distorted and eventually we break what I want to do before we get out of here today if you fit that category I am anointed of God appointed by God to help you today leave here with strength if I'm talking to you I want you to leave where you're standing and, and just just leave and where you're standing come and stand at the base of my platform in the name of Jesus your days of soaring begin today your days of coming through your days of overcoming we're not just surviving that is not the will of God surviving is not the plan of God God does not want us to survive I want you I'm telling you, man, I, I love you too much to give you a bunch of candy and stuff and nice little sermons on Sunday and to keep you coming back and feeling good for having been to church. I, this is not about church. This is about your relationship with God. This is about your relationship with God. This is about you uh, calibrating things in your life to where, see, you know, where you may be tapering off and, and some of you are tapering off. I could call some of you 